We have data on the Mississippi River every day since 1861. Every day, what that level is. That's incredible. It's back to the Civil War every day. We have that kind of level of information. And there's a lot of lots you can do with those kind of data sets. Our views of how frequently the river floods are way off. That's why we have all this these claims of yet another hundred year flood, you know, in almost back to back years. Well, we're on the lower Missouri River, probably at, what, mile two or something above Confluence Point. We will soon enough be passing by Confluence Point and entering the, the larger Mississippi River Channel. We're way too isolated from our rivers, and that's a heck of a mistake for this region. This place is the best place in the world to look at and study rivers. We have more rivers of a bigger disparity of size, management, and natural qualities of anywhere in the world. This river has no resemblance to what was seen by, by Lewis and Clark. The rivers have been narrowed at least a, a factor of two historically. We have now a deep navigational channel along most stretches except for the stretch we will soon be entering. This is the famous point where the, the Mississippi and Missouri rivers uh, come together. We will soon be starting in the uh, reach, the non-navigational reach. The uh, Chain of Rocks Canal comes in right over there. That's where the boats go through an artificial canal. And so this part of the, the river that uh, NASA Moses around Duck Island right here uh, is basically the most free part of the river, free flowing and natural and in the whole stretch from, from Minnesota to the Gulf. It's really a remarkable place. And all of a sudden we'll, the river will be full of islands and, and sandbars and other more natural features. And so it's been left more alone than any of the other stretches of the river. It's a precious stretch for that very reason. Some things should be preserved. There's just too little left.